Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a huge storm system with high winds and even blizzard-like conditions at times, along with severe weather. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. This is your Tuesday, November the 11th update. And what we're looking at here is the overall jet stream on the North American view. And we can see this powerful low pressure system of a 964 millibar low pressure that is bringing the atmospheric river back to the Pacific Northwest and to Washington and Oregon and Northern California, where they've had some much needed rain over the last uh, couple of weeks. This dynamic system is gonna be pushing inland today and along the northern areas, this is gonna bring some very high winds and even some blizzard-like conditions at times, but there's this tail end of it too. So you can almost see the transition of the, the, the winds turning around from the south. That's bringing the moisture levels back. And as this system comes together, that's gonna to set the stage for some severe weather in the central part of the US as we get through uh, the day on Wednesday. So. Let's take a look at the overall hazard index this morning. And out here, you can definitely see the gale warnings and the hazardous sea advisories from that dynamic system that's gonna be moving in uh, this morning. So then along with it, once it gets inland, it's gonna bring some very high winds. So they've already got some high wind warnings and watches in place for portions of Oregon, as well as uh, Washington. And where it's cold enough in the mountain regions, it's a lot of heavy snow, guys, anywhere from six to 12, and some of those higher terrains of 12 to 18 inches of snow with this dynamic system uh, pushing across uh, from west to east as we go through the day on today. But that whole system is gonna be pushing inland and that's gonna set the stage for our, our our severe weather to the south and some of that snow that's gonna break out uh, to the north. So let's take a look at the setup today. So you can definitely see that system coming in off the Pacific Northwest. The, those rain showers actually creep down into central Florida this time. So that even, I mean, central uh, California this time as this uh, much needed rain, <laughs> the further and further south it can get, uh, you know, typically in La Nina patterns, you don't really get much rain and more or less central and southern California, and that's what we're in. So anything that we can get crossing the line into central and especially towards the southern uh, regions here, we'll take it uh, by, by, by all means. But where it's going to be cold enough, a lot of that area is going to be transferring to snow, and that's why they've got those winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings in the mountain regions uh, today. But here's that cold front that's going to set the stage uh, not today because it's pretty clear for a good chunk of the country. But as we go into tomorrow, that's when things start to change. So here's the northern regions. You can see this cold front, kind of the demarcation line of some of the colder air. Uh, well, that's going to be setting the stage as these moves move across from uh, west to east. It'll have some snow showers to fly uh, on the back side. And then there's that tail of it, that second piece of energy it's got a lot more warmer air to deal with down further to the south. And as this system moves across, that's going to set the stage. This is the morning view at 8 a.m. Um, so not expecting too much into the, your morning. But as we get into the afternoon hours, that's when things change in, in a big way. So here's the setup as we get into that 6 o'clock time frame on Wednesday. Here's the northern region. You can see where it's cold enough. It's going to be snowing, starting to snow break out in uh, central parts of uh, Canada here. But there's that tail end of it. That tail goes all the way down into uh, portions of Missouri, into Kansas, into Oklahoma, and even into North Texas. So as it taps into that, some of that uh, warmer air, there's going to be a lot of lift. I showed you the jet stream. There's going to be a lot of lift with this system. And it's going to be a pretty fast moving. So I'm expecting somewhere around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, things are going to start blossoming in and around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, with that uh, tail end of the front. So let me zoom into that because the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a marginal risk for severe weather, really for all three modes. And it's gonna be a quick moving. So it's not gonna be a, like a widespread coverage, but there are gonna be uh, areas where pockets where some of these can turn pretty nasty. 
and all three modes of severe weather are in place uh, for portions of North Texas going into Oklahoma, as well as portions of Southern uh, Kansas here. So you can definitely see here's the tornado threat threat about 2%. Uh, hail threat about uh, you know 5% range as well as the the wind threat so you got all three modes of severe weather it's just the system's going to be moving across so fast starting about four o'clock and you know have that initial round and then the back side of the cold front will have yet have another round so I'm expecting a two round uh, punch uh, as the system comes through and I this is kind of highlighted on the the radar uh, reflectivity view this is uh, the radar about six o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday. We should see that initial batch move in into portions of North Texas, into Oklahoma, into Kansas here. And then you have that second batch. This is along the cold front. So this will be around Wichita Falls by then, portions of Oklahoma, central Kansas here as these storms break out. So you have that initial batch that will move through around you know five, six, seven o'clock from west to east. And then you'll have that second batch that'll move through with the cold front. And so kind of be about like a one, two punch with this system. And once this system moves out, and this is about a 10, 11 o'clock time frame, in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area, Oklahoma City area, and to east, eastern parts of uh, Kansas here. And as that, once that system clears, it's going to be rapidly moving. So there's about a six hour window. You're probably going to be see, seeing some storm development. But yeah, but once this clears out, it's going to be rapidly clearing on the backside. So there's no more storms once the cold front uh, moves through your area. But to the north, we're going to have to be dealing with some snow. And look at these isobars. They really start to tighten up. So you can see the comma Q uh, gradient down to the south as this continues to push off to the east. Now we're going to be setting the stage for more severe weather that's going to set up over the, uh, the the southeast and portions of the Dixie Alley. We'll go over that, but then it has that northern branch where snow is going to be breaking out in a big way on the northern side of this system. And as it tails across and pushes it further south, yeah, we could be seeing some snow starting to break out in uh, portions of North Dakota. This is about Thursday afternoon. So this is your Thursday afternoon time frame. So down to the south, yes, these things could st still be pretty nasty as that same system continues uh, moving across. So this is around the 12th. This is about Friday time frame, going into portions of much of Mississippi, going into Alabama, Tennessee here, uh, going into portions of Louisiana. This whole area will be under the gun for a round of severe weather as that southern side moves through. Again, it's going to be a fairly quick moving system. So I'm not expecting huge rain amount totals, but yeah, some of these could be pretty nasty as they as they move through from uh from west to east there. So but on the northern side, I think that's when our snowstorm really starts to get cranking as we get into that Thursday night time frame, into that Friday morning time frame, as it's able to pull in some of that colder air from the north. And once it wraps around and pulls it down, that's when these isobars really start tightening up in North Dakota and portions of South Dakota. Even Minneapolis is going to be probably getting into the action with some snow uh, flying in your area. And then that'll sneak into portions of Iowa and then some very heavy winds will follow it. So that snow will transfer it even to some blizzard light conditions at times because these winds are really going to be packing a punch. I kind of zoomed in to these, some of these wind gusts. And yeah, you could easily upwards to 40, 50, even portions of 60 miles an hour at times. Typically, you only need about 35 mile per hour winds over a three hour time frame to qualify for a blizzard. So I do feel like once we get into that Thursday night into the overnight going into Friday morning, there's going to be a window there. We're going to be probably seeing some blizzard like conditions into portions of North Dakota into South Dakota, getting into portions of uh, right around the edge of uh, you know, Minnesota here, Iowa, this whole corridor here, this is going to be could be under the gun to experience some of those blizzard like conditions with some blowing snow uh, in that area. I'm not expecting like huge amounts, uh, something like that, probably like two to six inches in these areas, but it's going to feel like a lot more with those higher winds and that blowing snow and could even have some even some whiteout conditions at times as it gets nasty for a good, you know, 
several hour window here in this uh, part of the country. So as this moves through, that starts to wind down as we go into that Friday afternoon time frame, it really starts to pull in that colder air. It filters into uh, more areas of Iowa here as that colder air continues to push in from the north. And then look at this, even by Friday afternoon, look how look where the system is. I mean, that's how fast moving this, this is. It's gonna be right along the East Coast now. So we're talking about the Carolinas, into Jersey, into New York City, into uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Boston area. Those areas will be under the gun uh, into New York, uh, upstate New York of some of those uh, some of those uh, heavier rains as this moves through nothing nothing snow or anything like that it's not going to be cold enough but this system will be all rain as it pushes pushes through your area by the time we get into that friday afternoon uh time frame so as this will continue to move through and as it continues to push colder air and it's a step down process colder air from the north yeah by saturday morning we could be cold enough to start breaking out in some of this some of this uh, rain will be transferring over to snow in portions of uh, Indiana and in uh, portions of Ohio by then. You haven't really seen any snow so far this season, but I do feel by this weekend, you're probably going to get some, at least a dusting or two, you know, one to two inches uh, in these areas as we go into Saturday. And I think it really uh, starts to pick up on a Sunday because some of these colder anomalies really start to filter in you can see it starts to warm up out west and then that cold push it'll be a kind of a glancing blow for much of texas and oklahoma the main colder push with the more below average temperature anomalies for this time of year is going to be really setting up over the southeast and all that gets into uh even florida i mean florida gets gets really the brunt of the colder anomalies uh, that you would normally see for this time of year because by Sunday that colder air continues to drain from the north and we'll start to see that transition into more of that change over to snow and to places like Chicago and to uh, northern in Indiana and northern Ohio here as we'll have some sporadic little snow showers in portions of Pennsylvania uh, upstate New York you know, going into Canada here as there's, it's gonna be cold enough for some of that to snow. And here's your temperature anomalies. By the time we get into November the 14th, again, continues to warm from, for, from the West, that colder air continues to press down to the Southeast. So by the time we get into late, late uh, this weekend, those colder anomalies of that 10 to 15 degrees below average temperatures will be locked and loaded into the Southeast and much of Florida as these sporadic two to three, four degrees below average temperatures will filter in into uh, the Ohio Valley. And you're looking at this, it's like, how is that gonna be cold enough to snow? Well, this time of year, it really doesn't take much because you gotta remember your average, high, average lows continue to step down. So by the time we get into November the 14th timeframe, this is typically your average low, what you would typically see for this time of year. Yeah, right around freezing, right? Chicago, Indiana, Ohio. So when you're seeing, you know, below average anomalies of two to three, you know, two to three degrees below average, and it's possibly snowing. Well, that's the reason why, because typically we're getting in the middle of November, right? I mean, it's two weeks until we have meteorologically winter as, as some of those, you know, you know, widespread forties for much of the Southeast, but you can see, yeah, you're, you're expecting typically widespread 40s for the southeast, but when you're seeing these below average temperature anomalies of 10 to 15 degrees for the northern panhandle of Florida, when your average temperature is typically around 50 uh, this time of year, this is the reason why, because these are your actual temperatures by the time we get into Sunday morning. Yeah, even widespread upper 30s for Florida Panhandle. So yeah, that's a that's a bona fide cold front reaching all the way down for the southeast when your normal low low is around 50 uh, this time of year. So you're talking upper 30s uh, for your region by the time we get into that November 14th time frame. As much of that colder air will continue uh, to press south and be really locked entrenched over the, a good chunk of the south southeast. But yeah, between now and then, you got all those higher winds to deal with as that system reaches across this week from west to east. 
And as it gets into the poor portions of the Dakotas and Nebraska here, there's the bullseye of what some of those higher wind gusts of those 50 to 60 miles an hour where some of those blizzard like conditions will be, will be taking place. And then you have that southern side where some of those higher winds, and it's not depicted here, but once these things turn severe, yes, you could be seeing those 60, 70 mile per hour winds at times within that severe thunderstorm. So let's take a look at some of the, the rain amounts. Like I mentioned, this is going to be a fairly quick moving system. So yeah, I mean, it continues to be impressive for the Pacific Northwest. We're just inundated to rounds and rounds of rain. Anything we can get in Northern California, especially in Central Cal California, is definitely much needed. Not much, to put, not much to speak of as far as rain prospects or even snow for a good chunk of the Southwest. But a lot of these areas are going to be picking up kind of, you know, isolated one to two inch amounts with rain because it can be moving so fast. I'm thinking probably a half inch, maybe an inch with that system as it moves through Dallas into Oklahoma. And then as it slows down a tad bit, once it gets up into these northern regions, because it's going to slow down with that low pressure system, these are some higher totals of one to two, even some two to three inches amounts. But again, these, these systems are going to be fairly progressive from west to east and so these sporadic one to two inch amounts are going to be pretty highlighted and it could slow down again by the time we get into uh, portions of the northeast but there's your snow there's your snow on the european model all these breaks out into uh, the mountain snows into our, our northwest regions where it slows down in canada heavier amounts of upwards to a foot even more in portions once it sneaks down into the Dakotas, getting into portions of Minnesota, a good two to six inch swath with that system. And once it feeds off into Iowa, going into Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, about a one to two inch dusting uh, with this particular system as this moves across uh, from west to east. Here's the latest uh, GFS model, kind of implies the same thing, fairly progressive as it moves from west to east throughout the week and even the snow totals on the uh, uh, GFS model kind of implies the same thing with those mountain snows and that system that moves through the Dakotas. It's a little bit more bullish once it gets into the uh, uh, Iowa and Illinois and Indiana, but not much difference from one to two in the European model and two to three inches more or less on the GFS as this continues to move across from west to east this week. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely leave your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.